Well, hello, hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're doing well. We've got a couple things that I want to talk about today. And they're building off of what we did yesterday, which was I read you this article that is the first in the series of articles and and and, and accompanying videos and podcasts and other other assorted content paraphernalia as well that I'm doing. It's called The Woke Mind. This is part of my actively unwoke Substack. You can see it's got its own spe uh, special little section here. Now, if you go to my actively unwoke Substack, you're going to be able to, of course, read all of the articles that I've got up there. And I've got a whole bunch of stuff right now. But if you're looking specifically for content on the woke mind, it's right up in the in the top menu. And I'm starting to, to build this out. And we read this article yesterday, which is explaining why you should never, ever, 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 ever expect the woke left to behave logically. And I want to encourage everyone to go back, watch yesterday's stream. I pulled out a clip. I uploaded the clip to YouTube, to Substack, to all of my other various platforms that I'm on. So you can watch it in a whole bunch of places if you're just looking for the portion about this article. But I do want to encourage people to go back and watch it. In case, just in case you missed it, or you want the too long didn't didn't watch version, why the woke left will never, ever, 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 ever behave logically is because logic and truth and reason are not their highest priorities. They have a completely different value set. And people's behaviors will reflect and, dare I say, even reveal to us what they truly value above all else. And when it comes to the woke left, what they truly value above all else is power, is control, is authority. I've said over and over and over again, the battle that we are in is not left versus right. It's not liberal versus conservative. It's not Republican versus Democrat. It is authoritarian versus libertarian. And you can be authoritarian and be on the left or the right. I focus in on the woke left simply because they currently have power and the woke right does not. The woke right just screams and reads on Twitter, but they don't actually have any institutional power to work with, which makes the woke left much more dangerous. But make no mistake, you can be authoritarian on both the left and the right. You can also be libertarian on both the left and the right. The, 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 the one that we're working on is authoritarian versus libertarian. And I bring this up because when I saw this story pop up today, it was like this article manifested into reality, which happens really every single day of the week, if we're honest about it. But this is a really overt example. Jordan Peterson earlier today tweeted out breaking the Ontario College of Psychologists has demanded that I submit myself to mandatory social media communication retraining with their experts for, among other crimes, retweeting this Pierre bloke. I don't know who that is, but I suppose we'll find out and criticizing Justin Trudeau and his political allies. Peterson wrote a whole long thread about this, and we're going to read it, and we're going to talk about it. And so that's one of the things we're going to talk about today on the show. Another thing I want to talk about is, I, God damn, did I trigger the unvaccinated last night? This is one of those things that um, sometimes, it's, uh, it's, sometimes it's almost 2 a.m., in this case, you can see I sent this tweet at 1.41 a.m. this morning. Sometimes it's almost 2 a.m. and you've been writing all night and you send a tweet that makes complete and total sense and you don't really think anything of it and it gets everyone on Twitter all a flutter and all pissed off. And it was very, very, very revealing for me that this tweet pissed probably about 40,000 people off. <laughs> 
And so we're going to talk about this as well. We're going to talk about why I was absolutely 100% correct with this tweet. And we're going to talk about some of the reaction that it's been getting. So those are our two orders of business for the stream today, guys. Please mount that like button if you're here for it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I do go live on this channel at 5 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Monday, wait, I just I just said the days of the week out of order. Oh, no. I go live on this channel at 5 p.m. Eastern time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'm bringing Friday back. It used to be that I was just going live on my second channel, Actively Unwoke, on Fridays for happy hour. I'm bringing ba- happy hour back over to my main channel. We'll talk more about that this week. There are a lot of reasons I'm doing that, um, mostly just to keep it consistent. And then on Saturdays, we go live a little bit later in the day for Socialism Saturday. And on Sunday, I rest. So I'm always doing something. If you don't like my content one day, come back the next day. I will probably be talking about something completely and totally different. Am I getting any sleeps in? Yes. Yes, you want to know why? Because I might stay up late, but I sleep in, man. I am so blessed that I have a profession right now in which I don't have to get up at the crack of dawn. I was getting up at 4 a.m. for years to, to, to haul my ass to Boston to go work a corporate job. I have earned my sleeping in. I am much more functional at night than I am in the morning. And, um, and so, no, I, I do get sleep. I just do it on a little bit of a different schedule. No, Jonathan, I did not mean vaxxed. This is part of the reaction I'm getting to this tweet. No, honey, I said what I said. And, and I wouldn't be showing you this tweet if I meant to tweet something other than what I tweeted. His stick around. We're going to talk about it. But guys, before we get into it, I just wanted to let you know that I've got a couple cool things coming up for my supporter community. On Sunday, Movie Nights is back in my supporter Discord. You can get access to the supporter Discord by joining my locals, joining my Patreon, becoming a member of my YouTube channel, becoming a member on my Substacks. There are all sorts of ways to get involved with it. We do weekly Movie Nights on Sundays at 8 p.m in my supporter discord. And this is Jennifer January. Jennifer is a loved and valued member of my community. She is a ho- the host for movie nights. She, she keeps us all in line. She keeps everything in track, like everything put together. Jennifer has a list of like 187 movies that we're going to watch for movie night, but because January is her birthday month, She gets to pick out all the movies and she wants us to watch The Jazz Singer on Sunday at 8 p.m. I've never seen The Jazz Singer, so I'm really excited about it, but you can join us for that. And we also do have a new book club coming up in my community. We're going to read one of my favorite fiction books of all time, Ender's Game. I don't know how many of you have read Ender's Game. I'm sure some of you have seen the movie. This is for the book, okay? I do want to watch the movie after we do the book club because i think the movie actually did a really decent job of adapting the book to a movie but do not watch do not watch the movie and then show up to the ender's game book club and 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 expect that you're going to find the same thing because although there is a lot of overlap between the book and the movie there's also things that happen in the book that they don't even touch on in the movie at all and those things are some of the more interesting things about this story so this is an incredible story it is a classic everyone should read ender's game it is it is like my my, my husband had to harangue me into reading this at first i didn't want to read it and now it is one of my all-time favorite books so i highly recommend the audio version The audio version on Audible is great. You can also, of course, get paperback, hardcover. I've got a beautiful leather-bound copy of it signed by Orson Scott Card himself. Victor got it for me for my birthday or for Valentine's Day or for one of those holidays where you give gifts. And um, that was a great gift. And uh, so you can join us for the book club as well. And how you get access to that is by becoming a member of my supporter community. You do that by heading over to activelyunwoke.com slash support. And there are a whole bunch of ways and you can become a supporter in whatever way works best for you. You can make a one-time gift on the platform. You can also join my locals community there. You can join my Patreon. You can sign up on my Substack. I'm really trying to get more paid subscribers 
through my Substack right now because I'm going to be putting a lot of time and energy into my Substack and producing written articles, producing content to explain the woke left ideology, what people need to do to fight back. So that is one of the places I would recommend. But Locals is my community. It's where you're going to get the most interaction. Patreon has the most options for perks. You can go through and 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 figure out what works best for you but any of these options will get you invited to my movie nights and my book clubs and my two zoom calls that we do every single week in my community tomorrow's zoom call is at noon these are private these are unrecorded these are where we can talk about whatever we want to talk about my community is the best and and i love having calls with them they always end on a high note and so you can get in the, get on the game by becoming a supporter at actively unwoke dot com slash support jonathan again with the boneheaded comment are you guys vaccine apologists don't be a fucking retard don't be a fucking retard okay don't be a retard yeah i said it three times that's how much i mean it all right guys one more thing before we get started as a reminder this is not my first stream or my only stream of the day it is but my first stream of the day because today is tuesday and that means we will be doing nothing remotely controversial with joshua at 9 30 p.m eastern time tonight it's about news and psychics and so you can come and join us for that at 9 30 p.m it's a great time if you've never been i highly recommend it all right let's get started jordan peterson is being remanded to the gulag for re-education training. I mean, I suppose it was inevitable. Listen, if we're talking about power being the thing that the woke left covets above everything else, then what you need to do is start looking at every single censorship, every single cancellation, every single deplatforming, every single weird thing that the woke left does that holds back information or tries to uh, get someone to bend the knee to their ideology, to think the way they want you to think, to talk the way they want you to talk. It is all and exclusively about gaining power over you. Uh, Kurt says, I'm surprised they didn't come for his license long before now. I totally agree with that, Kurt. I 100% agree. I'm I'm shocked that it took this long. But let's read uh, this thread that Jordan Peterson posted earlier today on Twitter. Breaking the Ontario College of Psychologists has demanded that I submit myself to mandatory social media communications retraining with their experts, experts, for, among other crimes, retweeting Pierre and criticizing Justin Trudeau and his political allies. Oh, he's like the con- oh he's like the conservative leader. Okay, so Jordan Peterson is not allowed to retweet a polit- an elected politician. Oh, that's nice of them. I have been accused of harming people, although none of the complainants involved in the current action were clients of mine, past or present or were even acquainted with any of my clients. Let's think about that for a second. How how would how would Jordan Peterson be causing harm to people by retweeting elected politicians or being critical of an elected politician? How is that causing harm? Well, of course it's not. And every and here's the thing about it. Every single person involved knows that Jordan Peterson is not causing harm. Every single person. Jordan Peterson knows he's not causing harm. The Ontario College of Psychologists know that he's not causing harm. The person, there are multiple people, I suppose, the people who reported Jordan Peterson damn well know that he's not causing them harm. And if there's any group on the planet who should know that words are not violence, it is a group of psychologists. The the profession of psychology, and I'm sad to say this as, as a psychologist myself, is completely gone. It is destroyed. If a group of psychologists cannot stand up and say, words are not violence someone else's words don't cause you harm unless you allow those words to cause you harm if a group of psychologists can't stand up and say that there is no point to the entire profession 
at all. It is completely corrupted from the ground up. Now, that's not to say there are not excellent practitioners of psychology. Uh, to be to for the record, I'm a little bit critical of psychiatry just in general. I'm not a Scientologist or anything, but there's a reason I don't talk about psychiatry. I think that people default way too quickly to medication and drugs. Some people need it. Most people don't. So I'm not talking about psychiatry, which I think has is is a woke profession in and of itself, but also has a whole other set of problems associated with it. I'm a psychologist. I don't prescribe medication. I never did. I'm not a clinician. But there are excellent practitioners of psychology. There really are. And and I, I want to make sure that's clear up front, because even though we can talk about the profession of psychology, we can talk about the governing bodies of psychology and say they are completely corrupt to the core. I don't want people to throw the baby out with the bathwater because therapy for a lot of people is necessary at times in their lives. Therapy can be really helpful when you find the right person. And there are excellent practitioners out there that don't buy into any of this bullshit. You just have to find them. And so I don't want to dissuade people at all from seeking out help when they need it because that help is available. It is not corrupted. And and I want to encourage everyone to, to take advantage of it because sometimes we just need a little extra help. And that's just the way it goes. Well, that's not what we're talking about right now. We are talking about a governing body demanding Jordan Peterson go to re-education camp because he said words they didn't like. I am to take a course of such training with reports documenting my progress or faced an in-person tribunal and suspension of my right to operate as a licensed clinical psychologist. They are quite literally coming for his license. I've had a lot of people try to, to come for my license. Now, I, I'm an industrial organizational psychologist. So in the state of New Hampshire, jokes on them, I don't actually need a license to practice my profession. Ha ha, too bad, so sad. But I'll tell you what, I, I really, I, I agree with what Kurt said earlier. I am shocked that they did not come for Jordan Peterson's license sooner. I really am. Because I had people threatening my license from like day one of me being on this red pill journey. And I was like, go ahead, report me to the state. They can't really do anything. Um, but I'm really surprised it took them this long. What the When the woke left cancels people. Now, both the woke left and the right cancel people. Let's not pretend the right doesn't cancel people. They do. But there is a distinct difference, and I write about this in my book, Actively Unwoke, The Ultimate Guide for Fighting Back Against Woke Insanity in Your Life. You can get your copy at activelyunwoke.com. Link in the description below. I talk about this in my book. There is a distinct difference between the way that the woke left cancels people and the way that the woke right cancels people. When the right cancels you, they try to go after your reputation. They make personal attacks. They call names. They spread rumors. They engage in smear campaigns extremely aggressively. It is all about attacking you personally. And they go on and on and on and on and on and do it in perpetuity. But they're not as successful at cancellation as the left. Because the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of times if a reing mob on Twitter is like acting like a group of hysterics and they're saying that bur the burn the witch, burn the witch, burn the witch, burn the witch, she, she deserves to be burned. If that's what they're doing, they look like fucking crazy people. And so they might feel really good about trying to cancel someone, but oftentimes they aren't as successful. The woke left is significantly more successful because when they try to cancel people, what they do is they go after your income. They go after the way that you make a living. They go after your ability to function in society. Pay attention to this if you see it. The woke right when they're canceling people will always make personal attacks. The woke left 
attacks your money. They attack your license. They attack your banks. They attack your payment processors. They attack your jobs. That's much more damaging. It's it's a more controlled thing because it happens over a shorter period of time. But the long-term impacts of it are much more damaging. Now, the question that I have is, is Jordan Peterson still practicing as a clinical psychologist? I don't know the answer to this. I don't know if he's still practicing. I don't know. Maybe he's practicing, but we're talking about onesies and twosies here and there. He he seems much more focused to me on like writing and commentary and traveling and teaching. So it might it might be a sacrifice that he's willing to make to give up his license. Because to be honest, he might not need it. Jordan Peterson is set financially. Like a a, a a clinical psychology license is not really going to to like it's not going to impact him being able to teach people. It's not going to be impacting going to really impact his ability to help people. It's not going to do any of that. So he might very well be willing to give it up. I don't know the answer to that question, but maybe we'll find out. Let's keep reading. About a dozen people from all over the world submitted complaints about my public statements on Twitter and Rogan over a four-year period out of the 15 million who follow me on social media, claiming that I had harmed people, not them, with my views. So think about, so, so what I want you to hear in this one is that we're talking about a dozen people submitting complaints that's minuscule in the amount of lives that Jordan Peterson has impacted. What that means is that what the Ontario College of Psychologists is doing has nothing to do with these complaints at all. It has nothing to do with these complaints at all. Not a single thing. What they are doing is a result of, of them wanting to get Jordan Peterson. And then they reverse engineered their way to find an excuse to get Jordan Peterson. So I want people to understand the process. It was not complaints come in, Ontario College of Psychologists go, ooh, there's a problem here. And then they demand Jordan Peterson go to the re-education gulag. That's not what happened. What happened is the Ontario College of Scientologists, I kept saying, I'm, I'm saying Scientologists in my head. That's that's a little bit of a Freudian slip, isn't it? What happened is the Ontario College of Psychologists wanted to nail Jordan Peterson's ass to the wall to get him to shut the F up. And then they said, oh, look, people have complained about Jordan Peterson. We can use these complaints to nail Jordan Peterson's ass to the wall. And then they used the complaints, they lied about the process, and then they said, you have to go to re-education camp, Jordan, and if you don't do it, we're going to take your license. And by the way, even if you don't agree with anything you hear in that re-education camp, you better keep your mouth shut, because if you don't, we're going to take your license. That's what happened. Understanding the process of how these things play out behind closed doors is important. The, the, the actions that they took were not the result of the complaints. The complaints were used to justify the actions that they took. Let's keep going. Let me get into this thread. He wrote a lot more. In its wisdom, the Ontario College of Scientology... I, I seriously keep saying Scientologists. <laughs> In its wisdom, the Ontario College of Psychologists, maybe we should just call them the College of Scientologists. <laughs> In its wisdom, they decided to pursue these complaints even though they could have dismissed them as vacuous. Well, again, Jordan Peterson's getting the, the process wrong. I have been accused of harming people, although none of the complainants involved in the current actions were clients of mine, past or present, or were ever acquainted with any of my clients. And even though many of them falsely claimed that they were or had been clients of mine, 
and were allowed by the College of Scientology. I swear to God, I'm not doing this on purpose. And even though many of them falsely claimed that they were or had been clients of mine and were allowed by the College of Psychologists to have their complaints investigated despite this falsehood. Well, I mean, listen, with psychology, I don't know what the standards are in Canada. So I could be I could be wrong about this, but like in it's my understanding. Again, I'm not a clinician, so if there are any psychologists in the chat, let me know if I'm wrong. You have to keep client records for like 7 years. I know what when I do research, I have to keep my research records for 7 years. I have to keep them. I have like a filing cabinet in my closet that I have to keep all my research records in for like 7 years before I'm allowed to destroy them. That's an ethical standard that like the APA has. But like Jordan Peterson is required to keep records of his clients. Why, like, why can't he just use those records to disprove that these people were ever clients? That would seem to be an easy solution for me. We are now in a situation in Canada under Justin Trudeau where practicing professionals can have their livelihoods and public reputations threatened in a very serious manner for agreeing with the official opposition and criticizing major government figures. Well, to be fair, Canada has been in this position for a while. This is why I don't buy Billboard Chris's bullshit at all. Listen, I know a lot of you guys like Billboard Chris, and I'm going to be honest, I was pretty ambivalent about Billboard Chris up until recently. Billboard Chris is that guy that goes to like protests and things, and he wears a sign that says like a father's job is to protect their kids from gender ideology. I had no problem with the guy. I really didn't. Um, he's from Canada. I don't know why he's bringing his stuff to the United States if he's from Canada, but that's what he wants to do. He's he's helping talk to people. I had no issue with that. However, hang on. However, Billboard Chris lately has been making a ruckus on Twitter about how Canadian school choice is just perfect and how we should not go anything beyond what Canada does for school choice. And he's been attacking people who are who are against school choice. Now, I personally am in favor of school choice. I'm in favor of school choice, not because I think it's going to fix the schools, but because I think it's a necessary step to get um, to bring people along with with viewing schools more critically. So I personally am in favor of school choice. There are a lot of people, James Lindsay included, who are not in favor of school choice. And I understand why. And I understand their reasoning. I really, really do. For me, this is a change management thing. And that's why I'm in favor of it. Other people have different reasons. I don't want to get myself in the middle of this particular fight, except to say that Billboard Chris has been running around Twitter picking fights with everyone and their mother that's opposed to school choice. And flaming them on Twitter saying, Canada has the perfect system. Canada has the perfect system. And every time he does this, I'm like, bro, bro, Canada does not have a perfect system for anything. What are you talking about? You think that implementing the Canadian system is the solution for the culture war in America? Are you off your nut? And Jordan Peterson is saying the same thing. But, like, this has been going on for a while. Does everyone forget about the truckers' protest? Did everyone forget how Canada basically stole all those donations for the truckers and then shut off access to their bank account? This is not a new thing in Canada. This has been going on for a long effing time in Canada. Canada is woke as shit. So I don't know why anyone is surprised about this. And I certainly don't know why Billboard Chris is running around Twitter going, the Canadian school system is what America should aspire to. No, dude. No. Wrong. <laughs> if I comply, the terms of my re-education and my punishment will be announced publicly. I have already had the second most serious category of punishment levied against me and have been deemed at high risk to re-offend. Can uh, Canadians, your physicians, 
lawyers, psychologists, and other professionals are now so intimidated by their commissioner overlords that they fear to tell you the truth. That means that your care and legal counsel has already been rendered dangerously unreliable. You know, this is all to make Jordan Peterson a public example of getting him to bend the knee. This is a humiliation ritual. This is like in Mao's China when they made dissidents wear those giant dunce caps and stand in front of these crowds of people that would yell and scream and admonish them for going against the regime. This is a public humiliation ritual to make an example of Jordan Peterson so that no one else dares do what Jordan Peterson did. Can anyone think of an example of a person in the United States that stuff like this might be happening to right now? Can anyone think of a very prominent example of who the establishment does this to in the United States? Exactly. Exactly. This is a struggle session. This is a struggle session perpetrated by the governing body of psychologists in Canada. Exactly. Trump. In the U.S., they do this to Trump. They're doing it to Trump. They're doing it to Trump right now. The release of Trump's tax returns, which is a whole lot of nothing, was a humiliation ritual. The January 6th hearings, in which they made this big show of, we're going to subpoena Donald Trump and refer him for charges was a giant humiliation ritual. And did anyone hear that the January 6th committee decided to pull their subpoena for Donald Trump? It was almost as if the whole January 6th committee, those weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of propaganda hearings, it was almost as though it was just a stunt to make it look like they were going to subpoena and charge Donald Trump. And then after they issued the subpoena, they renege and pull it back. Because no, psych, we weren't serious in the first place. And the reason they do this to Donald Trump is exactly the same reason they're doing it to Jordan Peterson in Canada. Because Donald Trump upset the apple cart. Donald Trump went back uh, and tried to, to deconstruct Everything the establishment overlords had built for decades and decades and decades. And they want to send the clear and incontrovertible message that you will never do this again. Don't you dare say something that we don't like. Don't you dare do something that works against us. If you do, we will humiliate you, we'll drag you through the mud, we'll go after everyone you know and love, and we will do it again and again and again and again and again and again until you get down on your knees and beg us to stop. That's the message that you, the United States government is sending to Donald Trump right now. And you don't have to be the biggest fan of Trump in the world to acknowledge that. And they're doing exactly the same thing to Jordan Peterson. And you don't have to be the biggest fan of Jordan Peterson to acknowledge that. Principles only mean something when you stand by them when they are inconvenient. If you are not going to stand up and say that what you are doing is wrong, when it happens to someone that you personally dislike, then you are not a principled person at all. Ask Queen's U Law Professor Party Bruce if he concurs on the legal front. I don't know who that is. To reiterate, I face public disgrace 
mandatory political re-education, disciplinary hearings, and potential loss of my clinical licensing for agreeing with Pierre and criticizing our standing prime minister. I am willing, if the College of Psychologists, not Scientologists, concurs, which they won't, to make absolutely every word of this fully public so that everyone can decide for themselves what is happening and let the chips fall where they may. And then Elon Musk responded to him, basically saying like like exclamation points. And Jordan Peterson retweeted that and said, it's worse than you think in Canada, Elon Musk. Regulated professionals are now terrified into silence by their respective colleges. That means they are no longer able to say what they believe to be true. And who needs that from their lawyers, physicians, or psychologists? One of the things, and this might seem boring, but I think you're going to see the necessity of it. One of the things that the libertarians in New Hampshire, and I know many other places are trying to do, is to get rid of professional licensing requirements. Jordan Peterson should not have to get permission from the government of Canada to practice psychology. Jordan Peterson's work should speak for itself. Jordan Peterson's experience should speak for itself. And people can choose to pay Jordan Peterson to practice psychology on them, or they can choose to go elsewhere based on how much they personally trust him to help them succeed. He should not need a license from the government controlled by a governing body of woke Scientologists to allow him to practice psychology. And yeah, I said Scientologists there purposefully. That was my only purposeful slip of the stream. And the same is true for all of you. I the, the only reason right now, I am convinced that the only reason that I am still able to practice as an industrial organizational psychologist is because I don't need to be licensed. The state of New Hampshire does not require that I have a license. But they do require licenses for a lot of things. They require licenses for teaching, in which the, the State Department of Education gets to dictate the standards for licensing, which are always going to require going to college. How much would the profession of education be transformed if we got rid of the state licensure requirements for teachers and stopped mandating that they go to college? Because college is where the problems start when it comes to teacher education. So get rid of the licensing requirements. You all of a sudden completely open it up and create a completely different teaching pool. Why do people need a license to cut hair? Why do people literally need a license to hold a pair of scissors and cut hair? Okay, I understand that hairdressers do things with like chemicals and stuff like that, but it's fucking hair. It's going to grow back. People can look at reviews online to decide who's good at cutting hair and bad at cutting hair. People can look at people's books or portfolios to decide if they're good at if they're good at coloring and, and doing all those things that they do with hair. Like there are other ways to prove your bona fides other than getting a license from the state to bless you to practice your profession. And by the way, those licenses were used against hairdressers during the pandemic, weren't they? Where hairdressers were like, come to my house, I'll cut your hair. And then the state was like, no, 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 no. If you do that, we'll take your licenses away so people couldn't even get haircuts. There is absolutely no reason that the state should be giving permission for people to practice their profession. If people want to patronize a service, they have the right to do that. If they don't want to patronize that service, they don't have to. No one's forcing them to. And I'll say this too, these professional licensing bodies are part of the reason that all of these professions are going so woke in the first place. Because you look at something like the American, uh, the American Psychological Association, they are the ones, the, the APA are the ones that bless all of the psychology programs in the country. If you go and study psychology 
at a non APA approved psychology program, you can't get licensed. If you can't get licensed, you don't practice. You could be the greatest psychologist in the history of psychologists. But if you don't follow the rules of the governing body, who today is made up of a group of woke leftists that are actively, the APA actively prevents the publishing of research that is against the leftist political agenda. They really do. I've heard about it so many times. They prevent solid research from being published if it does not say what they want it to say. There is no reason that most professions need to be licensed by the state. And this is a boring topic. It's not something sexy. It's not something sparkly. It's not something that Tucker Carlson is going to do a rant about on Fox News. But this singular issue of getting rid of government, government licensing requirements could have so much positive impact on so many people in so many professions. And if they got rid of that in Canada, Jordan Peterson wouldn't have to go to the re-education gulag. Something to consider. Something to consider. All right, guys, we're going to change topics now. Please mount that like button for me if you have not already. I do stream live at 5 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Coming back on Fridays now on my main channel. And um, let's jump into this other thing I want to talk about because I sent this tweet last night at around 2 a.m. And, um, well, it got people a little miffed. People didn't understand it. So yesterday, and I don't, I don't watch football. I know many of you watch football. I don't understand football. I have never, I have never gone to a school that has actually, no, I did my MBA at a school that had a football team, I guess, but like, I've never even been to a football game in my life, but I did hear tell that there was a football game yesterday in which one of the players apparently just fell over and had a heart attack in the middle of the game. Now, I'm sure, I am positive that that professional athlete who is probably in top physical condition, if we're honest, who is 25 years old, I am sure that there is a perfectly reasonable explanation for why a 25-year-old professional athlete would fall over and have a heart attack in the middle of a football game with no warning and no, no other explanation, no reason that he should be having a heart attack in the middle of a football game. I'm sure that had nothing to do with him being vaccinated at all. Because as my YouTube overlords require me to say, the vaccination is perfectly safe and amazing and nothing goes wrong with it and it is incredible and everyone should get vaccinated and all this stuff. I actually am vaccinated. I got the J&J. &J. I only got one. I never got a booster or anything, but I'm fine. And by the way, guys, I'm going to say this. If you got vaccinated, you should not be afraid. There were a lot of people that needed to get vaccinated to keep their job. There were a lot of people who made that choice. And I don't really care what choice you made, whether you got vaccinated or didn't. I got vaccinated to travel because I wanted to. And I, and I don't think it's going to hurt me, and I never did. I'm not nervous about it or anything. But... I, 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 there, I, I don't want, I don't think people should be afraid because if you're afraid, something bad is more likely to happen to you. Okay. But, you know, people are asking questions about why a 25 year old professional athlete killed over and had a heart attack in the middle of the game. And I think they're valid questions to ask. I'm sure it's not going to lead back to the vaccine at all because of course the vaccine is perfect in every possible way. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the unvaccinated for a second. Because, listen, we now exist in a time where, let me, let me ponder how I can say this without getting a strike on YouTube. We now exist in a time where the science 
is well under a little bit of scrutiny. The science of masking is under a little bit of scrutiny. The science of the perfect vaccination is under a little bit of scrutiny. And I think what unvaccinated people think is that this is going to wake vaccinated people up. I think that they think, and many on the conservative right, I'm sorry, guys, but it's true. I think what they think is going to happen, given the random rampage of athletes keeling over in the middle of the playing field, is that they think that people who are vaccinated are going to come to the realization that that they were lied to and that everything was wrong. I don't think that's going to happen. Now, that might be disappointing for a lot of people to hear, but I just don't think it's going to happen with any widespread with any widespread effectiveness because the vast majority of people in this country are still asleep. The vast majority of people in this country still believe everything they hear on CNN. The vast majority of people in this country do not ask questions. The vast majority of people in this country have no vested interest in going beyond what is served to them. Okay? If you don't want to see information, it is extremely easy to put your hands over your eyes and prevent yourself from seeing it. So I don't think we're going to have a rush of people who are finally waking up and questioning their decision to get vaccinated. I just, I could be wrong. But everything in my in my gut tells me that it is not in their vested interest to do so. Because then they would have to admit to them. Because like when you're red pilling, cognitive dissonance is, is a tricky thing. And some people can move through cognitive dissonance and a lot of people can't. Cognitive dissonance is when you have to hold in your head two conflicting ideas at the same time. So the two conflicting ideas might be in this case, I got vaccinated and the vaccine is keeping me safe and athletes are keeling over on playing fields for no apparent reason. Those are two conflicting ideas. In order to work through cognitive dissonance, one of those ideas is going to have to be accepted and one of those ideas is going to have to be dismissed. It is significantly easier to dismiss the idea of athletes are keeling over on playing fields and retaining the idea of I'm vaccinated and that's keeping me safe. It's not a logical decision. It's not a decision that's necessarily going to be the most, most healthy long term. But in terms of keeping your world hinged together. It is going to be the safer decision for a lot of people because the minute that you admit that something might be wrong, and of course, nothing is wrong with the vaccine. The vaccine is perfect in every possible way. You should all get vaccinated at your earliest possible convenience. As soon as you admit that something is wrong, that one thing could be, could be the thing that causes your entire worldview to change. If you admit that you were wrong about that one thing, how many other things are you wrong about? How many other things have you been lied to about? It takes months and months and months and months and months for people to work through this type of cognitive dissonance. And this is something that the right does not wrap their head around because the right is still stuck in. If we're just logical and we just present the facts, then everyone's going to see the world our way. No, that's not the way human beings work. The way human beings work is they want to keep themselves safe at all costs. 
It is part of our survival mechanism. And if keeping yourself safe requires you to say, I got vaccinated and that's keeping me safe, then any challenge to that is a threat to your survival. And your brain will shut that down so quickly it will make your head spin. Human beings do not make decisions logically. Human beings make decisions emotionally and then they justify those logical decisions. So I've had a lot of people since I tweeted this out about 15 hours ago say, Carlin, did you mean to say vaccinated in that tweet? Because you obviously meant to say vaccinated in that tweet, right? No, I did not. I absolutely did not mean to say vaccinated in that tweet. I meant to say exactly what I said, which is the unvaccinated are going to get very, very, very angry about what was done to them. And some of them are going to be unstable. I'm not suggesting there's no right to the anger. I'm suggesting that this is an anger that could get dangerous because of the severity of the offense. What I'm saying is that when there is not a rush of people on the left waking up and saying, you were right, conservatives. We were wrong the whole time. When Biden keeps coming out and saying, just get your booster, folks. When the media keeps propagating the same things about how amazing the vaccine is and how and how bad people are that don't get it, how bad those evil anti-vaxxers are. When, when, when more and more of this stuff keeps happening over and over and over again and the media keeps refusing to cover it because that's what the media does. When people see this, when unvaccinated people who lost their jobs, who were who were scorned by their families, who were told that they couldn't visit their elderly relatives when they were dying, who were told they couldn't go to the birth of their own children or their funerals or their grandparents, who, who were told that their kids couldn't go to school. What I'm saying is that people who have already experienced so much I don't want to use the word oppression, but I guess like discrimination, I don't even know what to call it. So much pressure to bend the knee to popular support for this thing. When they don't get their I told you so, and they are never going to get their I told you so, or at least not for a long time, maybe they'll get their I told you so eventually, but it's not going to come anytime soon. Those people are going to get angry. They're going to get really, really, really angry. Crash Bandit said they fired my wife after eight years of working for the school because of the jab mandate, plus denied her unemployment. Wouldn't that make you angry? That would make me angry. That would make me livid. I I lost lost a $20,000 training gig. I turned down a $20,000 training gig because they were mandating that I be vaccinated in order to do the training gig. And yeah, I ended up getting vaccinated to travel, but that was on my terms. I sure as shit wasn't going to get vaccinated to make money. I got vaccinated to do something I wanted to do, and I don't regret that decision. But I I was more than a little annoyed when someone who wanted to hire me for three hours of in-person work, because that was all it was, it was three hours of in-person work, was demanding that I inject something into my body in order to get hired for three fucking hours? Go to hell, dude. No. And so that wasn't even my job. That was just a training gig, right? And so if, if it was my job for eight years, all of a sudden firing me, of course I would be angry. And I would want and and when a year later, when a year, two years later, it started to come out that 25-year-old perfectly healthy professional athletes are keeling over on a football field on live TV, definitely not because of the vaccine, obviously not. I'd be pissed. I would want my I told you to be like, 
I fucking told you that this was going to happen. And then they and then they don't get there. I told you so. And then it just keeps happening again. And they're like, where's my, I told you so I was right about this all along. Why didn't you ever listen to me? Why, why were, why were we listened to? Why were we shunned from society? Why do we have to lose our jobs? People are going to get angry. And I know the conservative right well enough to know that some of those people, not all of them, not even a significant portion of them, but there are absolutely people that are in this group that are going to get belligerent, that have been pushed down for years and years and years. And then January 6th happened and they were pushed down again. And then and then all this vaccine bullshit happened and they were pushed down again. And then the the left the left has been carrying on about January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th for almost two fucking years. We got the anniversary coming up in a couple days. And they have to see this all day, every day. And then knowing that they were right and knowing they lost their jobs and knowing that they were shunned from society and knowing that no one listened to them, you're going to tell me those people aren't going to get angry? Of course they're going to get angry. They're still angry. They're going to get angry. Alatrope, I didn't miss your super chat. Relax. Alatrope says, what if the conservatives don't plan to take the progressives along at all? What if they've gone down the Germany 1930s route? I don't think they're there. I don't agree with that one. I don't think they're there yet. But I absolutely believe that they're going to get angry. Now, I've got so many replies to this. I just want to scroll through some of them. Because... You know, you have people like, and I don't mind Jake Shields. Jake Shields is fine. Jake Shields did not understand the point I was making. Um, we're happy with our decision. We've got so many people saying, did you mean the the vaccinated? You said unvaccinated. We, well, we went through plenty, but but us conspiracy theorists don't have these heart problems. I, I don't root for violence, but how should people who are pushed around co- like consistently react? Well, this person gets it. Let's see. Forced out of two jobs and lost a family member to the vax, I could go on, but I absolutely get what you're saying and I completely agree. So there were a lot of people that did actually agree with this tweet. There were also just a lot of people who were going, I I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's see if I can find some good ones. Yeah, my local public pool was closed to the unvaccinated. Children weren't allowed to do sports without a vaccine. Here, here's an example. Angry? Why should I be? I don't understand this at all. Nothing was done to them because they declined treatment. Nothing. <laughs> well, that's not true either. Doubt it. Many unvaccinated like here. Here's what I'm talking about. I got so many replies like this. Doubt it. Many unvaccinated like me are just sad about the outcome, which is quite heartbreaking. So I heard from so many people. They were like, "We're not angry." We're just sad and we're praying for the vaccinated because we are good and pious Christians who don't get angry. I'm like, you you want to know the ones that you should be suspicious of more than anyone else? It's the ones going, we're just sad and are just praying for all of the vaccinated. Those are the ones you should be the most concerned about. Those are the ones, man. They're the quiet ones that you don't expect. And then all of a sudden they blow up at you. But a lot of people didn't understand what I was saying. Because a lot of people aren't looking beyond the surface level of this. Should people who got vaccinated be scared? I would suggest not. I don't think that there is any purpose or any value in being afraid. But even if even if people were even if we could say that maybe there are people who are vaccinated that are rethinking that decision, we are not going to see 
the large sea of people waking up that the unvaccinated think they're going to be. And I think we're going to see people retaliate. Because when the pendulum swings over this way and the pendulum was over here for two years with the pandemic, it is inevitable that the pendulum is going to swing in the other direction. It is absolutely inevitable. And so I want to just recommend everyone just, you know, allow calmer heads to prevail. Whether or not you are vaccinated or whether or not you are unvaccinated. And again, YouTube overlords, I am actually vaccinated and I'm not actually afraid of it. But whether, no matter what team you, you play out on, just allow cooler heads to prevail. When people get angry, and a lot of times anger exists on the subconscious level before it exists on the conscious level, which means you might not think that you're angry, but it builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And one day you explode and you don't even know why you're exploding. When you get angry, you behave unpredictably. You don't view situations logically. And you can make stupid mistakes. Listen, I was at January 6th, man. January 6th is actually a really good thing to equate this to. I was at January 6th. And I will never regret being at January 6th. Because I saw in person what happened. And what happened was a group of people got pushed way too far for years. And they weren't listened to. And they weren't even treated like human beings. And on January 6th, that exploded all over the Capitol. And for all those people who were like, it was Antifa, it was Antifa, it was Antifa. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I'm not saying there weren't onesies and twosies there, but I was there. And I saw a lot of Republicans and a lot of conservatives and a lot of Trump supporters breaking windows, going into buildings, causing commotion. And I'll tell you why it happened. It happened because they had been pushed around and beaten down and not listened to and not considered and not even treated like human beings for years and years and years and years and years. And when it exploded, it exploded. And I'm not I'm not suggesting that the majority of people that were at January 6th were doing that because that's not the case, man. I've said it a million times. There were at least 50,000 people on the Capitol lawn that day. The enormity of that crowd on the Capitol. I have never seen anything. There were a million people in Washington, D.C. that day for January 6th. There were a million people there. There were probably more than 50,000 people on the Capitol lawn when I was there. If every single one of those people had gotten so angry that they exploded, the Capitol would not exist today. So the vast majority of those people were standing around and waving their flags and chanting their chants. And they just wanted to have their voice heard. The vast majority of those of those people did not explode. The vast majority of those people were just doing their thing and they weren't doing anything wrong. But a very, very small sliver of those people did explode. And people are angry at me in the chat for telling them the truth because conservatives don't like to hear the truth any more than woke leftists like to hear the truth. Because although there were Antifa there that day, we're talking onesies and twosies. We're not talking about a significant amount of people compared to the overall amount of people. They were absolutely Trump supporters doing it. They were absolutely conservatives doing it because they reached a point, a small sliver of them, where they couldn't take it anymore and they exploded. And I think exactly the same thing is going to happen when it comes 
to the unvaccinated. I think exactly the same thing is going to happen. I have a member chat from Nick, who's been a member of the channel for three months. Thank you, Nick, for this member chat and for being a member. Sean Penn said recently, get the jab or be shunned from society. One group has publicly wanted to prosecute another and then ask for forgiveness. Well, people should always be able to ask for forgiveness. And you can't, you cannot say that Sean Penn, who is an actor is representative of all society. I don't think that's fair. Sean Penn is is crazy. He's also not a person in charge of anything, except for himself, I suppose. Um, but again, I think that the fact that you bring up the Sean Penn example is a great example of this. Because people are going to focus in on Sean Penn and go, why is he allowed to say that? Why does he want to put me in jail? Why doesn't he want me to have a job? Why does he want to punish me two years later when there are 25-year-old healthy professional athletes that are keeling over on a football field in the middle of the game on live television? Obviously not because of the vaccine, YouTube. The vaccine is perfect in every possible way. But people are going to start to get angry. And when people get angry, they do things that are stupid. King Peter of the chat says, I think both reactions are reasonable and expected. Either I was right and proving me right makes me happy, or I was right and ignoring evidence makes me happy. Core personality differences or disc. Great question, Peter. I don't think this has anything to do with the disc profile at all. I think that any 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 person of any profile type can um can succumb to confirmation bias. What this is at the end of the day is it's about political tribalism. And like we talked about yesterday with this article, and this is not exclusive of the woke left, but we just talked about it in this context. The right does this too. They don't behave logically because logic is not their highest virtue. It's not the thing they covet above all else. The thing they covet above all else is power. And that's not, that has nothing to do, I mean, I suppose you could argue that the dominant style on the disc profile would, would do that, and, and that is where most narcissists lie. But I think anyone of any profile can be part of a political tribe. They're using it to advance what their tribe wants. Jamie says... People should be more concerned the FBI were in the crowd, egging those who went into the Capitol building. What what uh, what same government, I think you meant what same government does this? Again, Jamie, I was there. I was right next to the doors. Those That was not a significant number of people. The conservative influencers who have lied to their audiences to say that this was all the FBI, it was not. I'm not saying they weren't there. They were there. They were obviously there. But it was not just the FBI. And this is another reason why I absolutely believe that the unvaccinated are going to do, or not the, not, not them as a collective, people who are unvaccinated and pissed off are going to do something stupid. Because they continue to deflect from any responsibility at all. If every single Republican and every single conservative and every single Trump supporter had stood up collectively and said, no, we're not doing this. No, you will not fire our friends for being unvaccinated. No, you will not shun us from your business. And if you try to, we will never patronize your business again. If every single one of them had stood up and stood by the principles they claim to have, then the Democrats would never have been able to get away with this. They never would have been able to get away with it. That's reality. If everyone who wore those do not comply hats that the Daily Wire gave out actually didn't comply, they would have been able to get away with it. They wouldn't have been able to get away with it. They got away with it because the conservatives and the political right and the MAGA people and the Trump people don't represent 
a viable political opposition. They don't want to take responsibility for their own actions. People who don't want to take responsibility for their own actions are the most dangerous people at all. They are the most dangerous people that exist. Because they will always and forever be deflecting their own role. And then they're going to get angry when things don't go their way. And they will deflect any responsibility, which is just going to make them angrier. Because they're going to be looking for a scapegoat to blame when things don't go their way. All good, Jamie. I appreciate you being a member of the channel. I know we don't always agree, but I do really do. I appreciate your support. Contrary to the myth that I don't have people who disagree with me. So that's really all I have uh, to say, guys. I think buckle up. It's going to be an interesting year. And I think the biggest lesson that people should take away from this is that you have to stand up for what you believe in, but you have to stand up in ways that are smart. You have to stand up in ways that are not going to result in violence or destruction. Because if you don't, you are no better than them. You do not have to give up ground in order to state a position, in order to stand up and say, no, I don't agree with you and here's why. In order to resist patronizing businesses that demand you adhere to a certain set of principles. There are ways to fight back that are smart and there are ways to fight back that are dumb and are going to actually work against you. And what I really strongly recommend is everyone, everyone, everyone this year needs to take more personal responsibility for the emotions that they are experiencing and what's going on in their head. Because if you do not, if you refuse, it is very likely that you are going to get angry. And when you get angry, you make stupid decisions. And I say this as someone who's made a lot of stupid decisions when I've been angry. I'm not suggesting I'm any sort of saint. I'm not suggesting I'm perfect. I'm not suggesting I've never been in that position because I have been in that position. I've been down that road and I know where it goes. And I'm trying to warn you before you go too far down it. Being angry solves nothing. Engaging in violence and destruction solves nothing. If you want to win, you have to win with your ideas. If we can't change hearts and minds, it's all lost anyway. All right, guys, that is all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Please mount that like button on your way out the door. And remember... Because this is Tuesday, this is not my last stream of the day, it is but my first stream of the day, and I will be back in about three hours, we will be doing nothing remotely controversial with Joshua at 9.30pm Eastern Time tonight, it's News and Psychics, Joshua is a professional psychic, you can ask him to psychic things that are going on in the world, even if you don't believe in psychics, I promise it's fun, we have a great time with it, and in the meantime, make sure you head over to my Substack which is Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N dot substack dot com and hit subscribe. You can subscribe to all of my articles for free. You can also support the work I'm doing on my substack or you can join my locals or my Patreon or make a one-time gift on my website, activelyunwoke.com slash support. I really do have a goal of, I really want to get like a thousand new subscribers, like either on Patreon or uh, locals or Substack uh, from for like a monthly $5 pledge for the new year because I'm trying to make unwoke activism my full-time job. If you guys want to support the work I'm doing, I do provide perks. I'm providing a roadmap of things I'm going to focus on. I promise to be a good steward of your dollar. And we're going to come back tomorrow and do another 5 p.m. stream. And I will see you guys at 930 tonight for nothing remotely controversial. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.